हेलो दोस्तों वेलकम बैक टू अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट लेक्चर ऑन एनवायरनमेंट कॉन्सेप्ट्स सो लेट अस स्टार्ट सो इकोटोन इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट व्हिच मींस इट्स अ जोन ऑफ जंक्शन बिटवीन वन एंड मोर डाइवर्स इकोसिस्टम फॉर एग्जांपल मैनग्रोव व्हिच इज अ जोन ऑफ जंक्शन बिटवीन द मरीन एंड टेरेस्ट्रियल इकोसिस्टम देन देयर इज अ ग्रास लैंड व्हिच इज अ जोन ऑफ जंक्शन बिटवीन ट्रॉपिकल फॉरेस्ट एंड द डेजर्ट and third is estuary which is the junction between the saline water ecosystem and fresh water ecosystem so edge effect has an important uh, place in ecosystem because um, the species here can be entirely different from both of the ecosystems and this is called as the edge effect right next important is a ground level ozone and this is also called as bad ozone Uh, because it has very bad impact on health as well as visibility during the daytime because nitrogen dioxide and methane combine combine with the sunlight that forms a f- uh, forms a ground level ozone which impacts visibility and it creates respiratory respiratory problem remember carbon dioxide does not involve in formation of ground level ozone next is green water foot uh, footprint of blue water footprint and grey water footprint as important concept which are related to um, how is water used in different processes next is wo- um, biodiversity hotspot uh, biodiversity hotspot hotspot is a concept uh, uh, which uh, uh, which which contains a region which meet two important criteria uh, first criteria is at least uh, it contain at least 1500 species of vascular and plant as endemic iska matlab hai ki the species are endemic and does not found uh, from region anywhere else apart from that region and uh, second is at least it should have lost uh, 70% of its original habitat right and it needs protection so this concept of biodiversity at hotspot is adopted by the conservation international from uh, norman mayers hotspot Uh, there are four important hotspots around india and india first is himalaya entire indian himalaya region is uh, also which includes in pakistan tibet nepal bhutan or china is a hotspot is second is indo burma region which includes entire northeastern india except assam and andaman group of islands so remember that assam and andaman is not part of uh, this hotspot third is western ghat and sri lanka so western ghat uh, direct from directly from uh, gujarat to sri lanka is a part of hotspot a fourth is sunda land which is uh, which starts from nicobar group of islands to the uh, to include indonesia mashalia malaysia of uh, singapore brunei and philippines right next is what are the important industries uh, uh, which of the following industry is largest consumer of water in india so remember the thermal power plant uh, apart from fertilizer sugar and pulp and paper industries among these uh, thermal thermal power plant consumes lot of water right uh, and india's uh, the water efficiency of indian thermal power plant is of, uh, is that it consumes around 80 cubic meters it consumes around 80 cubic meters of water for every 1000 kilowatt hour power generation generated and this efficiency is very less as compared to the modern ttp which are in developed countries which consumes very less water less than 10 cubic meters for every 1000 kilowatt hour power generated uh, next is oligotrophic lakes and eutrophic lakes so oligotrophic lakes means lakes which are uh, very clear which has very clear waters and has a high drinking water quality as compared to eutrophic lakes eutrophic lakes are not clear they have murky water and drinking quality is very less because it contains quantities of nitrogen phosphorus and other biologically useful nutrients right uh, which which has high biological productivity which makes water murky and uh, unclear so uh, remember this difference between oligotrophic and eutrophic lakes uh, the name which m- might feel sometimes confusing and we You, you might hit uh, wrong options here so remember there's a dif- difference between oligotrophic and eutrophic uh, next is 
bio uh, next next uh, next question is about bio biosphere reserve which is demarcated in three three regions co region buffer region and transition zone so in transition zone which is kept entirely free from human activity uh, second zone is buffer zone in which tourism fishing and grazing is allowed to some extent which does not threaten the uh, biodiversity biodiversity uh, third option is transition zone uh, where the settlements and croplands can be allowed and uh, set, uh, this is where human activity is uh, maintained next is seaweed uh, see in recent years seaweed has seaweed has acquired a lot of import importance because of its uh, different properties which contributes to the medicine uh, which contributes to the bio diesels and uh, which which has uh, some cultural significance so let us uh, see what are the what are what are the what are its importance so methane can be obtained in large quantities by their biodegradation so seaweeds can be biodegraded to get methane agar agar is important product from bio uh, seaweeds which has a commercial value and used as a healthy addition to the weight loss because it has it is uh, low in calorie fat and sugar but it has it has its character characteristic it it it, it is used as appetite suppressant suppressant because after you eating it you don't feel uh, very hungry right and it makes you lose weight so agar agar is it is water soluble in digestible fiber known as hydrophilic colloid so remember this this seaweed and seaweed has important uh, usage for the drug treatment of goiter and stomach disorder next is uh, difference between sea grass and seaweeds so you might uh, feel confused uh, that sea grass and seaweeds are both are similar but they are entirely different sea grass have roots leaves and veins but this does not uh, but seaweed does not have distinctive le leaves roots and veins mm. and sea, sea grass is considered as most productive ecosystem and it provides a uh, shelter and f uh, food for large fish crabs turtles marine mammals and birds and sea grass uh, sea grasses can be found in shallow salty and brackish water in many parts of the world from tropics to arctic uh, except in antarctica so we can say that in antarctica you will not find sea grasses uh, sea grasses have roots that are that are, that are extended in the sediments uh, which is used to the store which is used as a store and absorb nutrients from the soil sea grass is also known as lungs of sea because for one square meter of sea grass can generate about 10 liters of oxygen every day through photosynthesis so remember for the health of uh, a uh, marine ecosystem sea grasses play important role next is what are the short lived climate pollutant so short lived climate pollutant are responsible for around 45% of the current global warming and there are mainly four uh, short lived climate pollutant which is black carbon methane tropospheric ozone and hydrofluorocarbon so remember this is a tropospheric ozone not a ground level ozone and it, it has very relatively short lifetime lifetime because it can stay in atmosphere for few days to few decades and uh, dangerous amount of uh, these climate pollutants in environment can cause premature deaths heart and lung disease stroke heart attack chronic respiratory disease such as bronchitis aggravated asthma so in order to uh, limit the uh, amount of short lived climate pollutant there is a, a coalition at a national international level which is called as climate and clean air coalition to reduce and it is it is proposed by united nation unep and six countries bangladesh canada ghana mexico uh, recently india has become its india has also officially joined the CCAC Next is brown carbon So brown carbon is formed out of tar balls which are light absorbing and carbonaceous particles uh, which are emitted during the fossil fuel burning So in Himalayas we have found black carbon and tar balls uh, which is because of uh, the paddy that is burned in Indo Gangetic plain and uh, the particles emitted from it reached Himalaya and because it has light absorbing properties Uh, it, which can cause uh, rise in temperature and which can fasten the process of uh, glacier melting so from this perspective this brown carb carbon becomes important again this uh, short lived climate we have recently seen what are the short lived climate it is a black carbon methane hfcs and ozone remember this is tropospheric ozone uh, 
are not a ground level ozone next is sulfur and phosph uh, phosphorus cycle so sulfur and phosphorus are derived from the sedimentary cycle and they does they do not appear in atmosphere so this is important uh, fact that you must remember because it is there it has the upc last in prelim because sulfur is in, is it is non because sulfur is has a non polar nature and it because of that it is very difficult to dissolve in water so thank you for listening to this lecture uh, we will see you soon back thank you